So the the instructor of the class says that 50% is your chance of getting a stock, of guessing a stock uh, that is, that's going to go up. You got a 50% get uh, chance of being right. Uh, but the student says, no, nah, I think I got a better strategy. I think I'm going to be a winner 58% of the time. Okay, well, to, to really test that claim, uh, we need to come up with some numbers because it's an 8% difference. Maybe they just got lucky with those 200 stocks. So we can test that claim uh, by finding out how, in this case, the problem wants us to, to calculate how many standard deviations it is below or above the mean. And if you need to know how many standard deviations you are from a mean, that's a z-score. Remember, a z-score, the very first one we ever did, was where you took a value that you were trying to test, you subtract it by the mean, and divide it by the standard deviation. And what that does is it tells you how many units you are in standard deviations from the mean. So a z-score tells you how many standard deviations above or below the mean that you are. In this case, it's a z-score for a percentile, for a probability. So we need this formula. Uh, the probability we get from the sample, subtracted by what we assume is the true prob probability, and then you divide by the standard error of a proportion, which is, if you have it, the true probability and then it's one subtracted by that true probability, that hypothesized true value. We really don't know which is true. Maybe he really does get it 58% of the time. But the status quo probability is always your population proportion. That's the one you're trying to compare it against. So 0 0.58 is our probability uh, that, that's hypothesized that we got from our sample. We're comparing that to the probability of 0 0.50. We want to divide that by the square root of 0 0.50, or 0 0.5, I don't know why I'm saying 0 0.50. And then you do 1 minus 0 0.5, and then the sample size was 200. So when you make this calculation, you've got your z-score. If it's positive, that means you're above the mean. If it's negative, that means you're below the mean. And to calculate these probabilities, that's just using a z-score table, or you could Google search z-score to probability calculator and just type it in. Just make sure you're paying attention to whether it's above or below. Um, and then part B, if there are 100 students in this class, are you surprised that one was this successful? Um, this one's kind of a, it seems like a judgment call. But what we'd say is that um, in probability, well, if there's 100 students. Here, let's, I think we need to know the answer for this one. I think it's a... Uh, I think it's good, I'm, without giving away the full answer, I think 0 0.012 is the probability uh, that you'll get from that z-score. I guess I can do it both ways. So let's say the probability was 0 0.012. And if, if you have 100 students, you expect probability times the number of students. That's an expected value that we saw earlier. You expect 1.2 students to uh, have this result. Okay. Because um, an expected value is a probability times an amount. You've got a probability of, of having this result of 0 0.12, 0 0.012, and you've got 100 uh, different uh, different students. So you expect a little more than one student. So that means you expect one student, maybe two students to have this result. So it's not surprising in this case. And then if you had an even bigger probability, 0 0.12 times 100, that's 12. You expect 12 students to have this result. 